A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that no, enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt, an empty earth. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes, its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. More torturous than all else is the human heart. Beyond remedy, who can understand it? I, the Lord, alone probe the mind and test the heart to reward everyone according to his ways, according to the merit of his deeds. The word of the Lord. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the Pharisees, there was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and, died and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried and from the netherworld where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, my child, Remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you are a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours, he said. Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, 
They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. More torturous than all else is the human heart. The human heart, of course, can be seen in many different levels, everything from the physical organ that pumps the blood through our bodies all the way down to where our emotions and even where our will resides. The will, one of those beautiful gifts or faculties of our soul, the human will. Sadly, because of the effects of original sin, the human will is divided. It's always being drawn here or it's being drawn over there. On the one hand, it's being drawn to the things of this world. And on the other hand, it's being drawn to the things of God. And so there's this tremendous tug of war that we all know, we all certainly are experienced, we're human beings of that this or that. And it's sort of like, it can be dizzying sometimes. In our minds, in our intellects, we know what is necessary. We must choose God, otherwise we cannot live eternally. But we know how much we still are craving for the things of this world, not necessarily the bad things, and certainly we need the physical things of this life to sustain us, but we know what happens when this is what dominates our lives, when we are too attracted to the things of this world. It blinds us then to God. And like our friend in the gospel today, the rich man dressed in fine purple robes, it blinded him to the presence of God and others, particularly those who are in most need, the poor that are among us. So what's the remedy? The remedy is we must keep choosing God. We must assess every day. We must discern every day where the obstacles are, what things are still attracting me too much so that I am being blinded by the loving presence of God that's seen in everybody. As we begin this new day together, as our Lenten journey continues, yes, our wills are divided, but let's pray more and more for the grace as we intensify our prayer life, the quality of our prayer life, not necessarily multiplying words, but just to see the presence of Jesus in this world around us, particularly in those places where we would expect him the least because perhaps that's where he will be found the most. What you do to the least of my brothers and sisters, you do unto me. And so let us allow the grace of God to help us so that we can keep choosing the right things, the things that are God. And as we continue to allow God's grace, that Holy Spirit that's been breathed into us, to be able to see clearly God in our midst. Confident in the compassion of our Heavenly Father, let us turn to him with our petitions that all members of the church may boldly proclaim that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one of God. Let us pray to the Lord. 
that leaders of nations experiencing conflict may work tirelessly to alleviate ethnic and religious tensions and encourage respect for one another, let us pray to the Lord. That all victims of violence and terrorism, especially refugees and children, may find comfort and healing in our loving God, let us pray to the Lord. That all who suffer from mental or physical illness may experience our prayerful support and find healing and strength through the care of medical professionals, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the intention of our Mass this morning for Marie and Jeff Sievers. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for all our beloved dead, especially those who will die alone today. And let us remember especially the priest of our diocese who died on this day, Father Matthias Schwelbach, Father John A. Dries, and Father William J. Rice, and for all our loved ones, that they may see the face of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, you established a new covenant with Noah and his descendants and set a rainbow in the sky as a sign of your promise. Help us to always be mindful of your great love for us and trust that you will answer our petitions according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 